PNG tuber is. Yeah, the These were the responses. I've decided to start. Jelly Bean, Jelly Bean, Jelly Bean. Arguably one of the most universally despised YouTubers currently, with her name being absolutely riddled in controversy for the better part of two months now. Now, I've been following this situation for a reasonably long time, so I feel it was necessary to give my two cents on this situation, because I have quite a lot to basically go over regarding this drama, and the deep-rooted problems saturated in the very popular social media hate mob directly targeting her currently. And before we continue, I would also like to clarify Jellybean is about 17 years old, so she is still underage as she clearly specifies on her social medias like her Twitter. Now this point will be very crucial for aspects I will discuss later on in this video, and you can probably guess what that is. But for now, for those people who have been living and rotting under the rock for the last two months, Jellybean has skyrocketed in popularity since December, gaining nearly 1.8 million subscribers, which whether you dislike her or not, you have to respect is a pretty impressive feat. Jellybean ultimately managed to make her own social media fanbase empire by basically benefiting heavily off the already broken and uninspiring YouTube Shorts algorithm, which is where you can find simply the best content from people like Lankybox. And also while catering towards the same audience who watches and indulges themselves in the Dream SMP content. So you know, your classic Tommy in it fans, your Dream fans, you know, 12 year old children. I and so when you have all these kids watching you, Jellybean has adapted a rather irritating internet persona one could possibly argue to try and replicate the classic humor of other popular dream SP members you basically keep the kids watching your content this is so boring how do you have 130,000 viewers don't worry one of those viewers is your mother <laughs> And that's where the problem lies, because her content isn't exactly the best. It is often very loud and obnoxious. I'm ready. Put me in, coach. Put me in. We're barely at 2 a.m. Candice, can these nuts fit in your fat mouth? Oh my God, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Thank you for the three. <laughs> Crowned with unfunny humor. People with socks and sandals in the snow. They are the most sus people. More than Jelly Bean. Wait, okay, wait. How am I sus? Wait, Chica's actually kind of hot. I mean, what? Oh my god, I, I wear a mask with the smile. <laughs> I'll feel a lot better. <laughs> no! No! Get me the f out of here! <laughs> Sorry, I just threw away. <laughs> you pedophile! Past your bedtime, you must be punished. No, he's a pedophile. He's a pedophile. Chai, he's a pedophile. And no me gusta. No me gusta, cha. Or in direct violation of the biggest felony on the internet, which is being cringe. <laughs> And just to allow you to all get a better understanding of who Jellybean actually is, she's basically what you would call a comfort streamer, which is what you would define any of the Dream SMP members as. Basically, the audience immorally pictures the said streamer to be some sort of emotional therapist and someone to provide comfort to them in sad times, rather than someone who actually does what they do for the money, which is a pretty embarrassing mindset to have. Because basically, it's creating an extremely weird and unhealthy relationship with a streamer who basically doesn't even know you exist. And that is the most realistic and best way to put it. One of those viewers is your mother. But the whole situation basically started to gain more traction after Jellybean encouraged her fans to spam comment the message it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece in her YouTube shorts comment section basically to try and break the world record of spam comments on a video. I think we can set a world record. Now hear me out. So recently, I've kind of gotten a little army of myself. If you look in my comments right now, you probably see a lot of people with the Jellybean profile picture saying it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece. Now this got me thinking, what if we hit a world record for the most comments on a YouTube short? I know it sounds crazy, 
but I think it's possible. If everybody watching this video typed, it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece, 10 times, I think we can hit that record. That's not all though. I want you guys to get your friends involved, okay? I want you to send this video to your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, your dog, your fish, your monkey, and I want them all to comment the same thing. Let's see how many comments we can get on this video. Obviously her fans, being literal six-year-old children, decided to spam this phrase absolutely everywhere, including channels which had nothing to do with Jelly Bean, like my own. So when I made videos on literal pedophiles and other serious situations, I had these children just posting, it isn't a mistake, it's a masterpiece, clearly not caring about the context behind the video whatsoever. And keep in mind, this spam went on for months in countless YouTubers comments and on other serious videos. Because Jelly Bean kept continuously making short videos, encouraging her fans to continue the spam, basically to outcompete other PNG YouTubers who are also telling their fans to spam. And her young impressionable fans went on to other people and just spammed the message, making it extremely annoying to see in the comment section. So the other day, I told people to slap my Minecraft face under their profile pictures. And surprisingly, a lot of people did it. So I think we should move on from YouTube and go to other platforms. I want you guys to change your profile pictures everywhere, not just YouTube. I want you to change them on Twitch, Instagram, Discord, which whatever platform you can think of, change your profile picture and slap my Minecraft face on them. Don't even tell people what you're doing it for. If people ask you, just tell them beans. What if we tried hitting that world record one more time? But this time, we try getting to 3 million comments on a YouTube short. I know it's possible if we work together. All you have to do is share with your friends and comment at least a hundred times it's not a mistake it's a masterpiece i think the next plan for the jelly bean profile picture gang is that we need to move to twitter so this is what i want you guys to do i want everybody to first go follow my twitter at bean not here follow my twitter and tweet hashtag beans and after you tweet that i want you to put it's not a mistake it's a masterpiece this might be my worst mistake yet so i have around 50k discord now, Jellybean did actually specify to her audience to stop spamming in other creators' comment sections, but keep in mind, this was in her community tab, so the message wasn't delivered to her entire audience, so some of them would have continued doing it, thinking it was still acceptable to do so. And her other fans even stated they didn't even care and it would continue, with Jellybean also telling her fans to stop sending death threats to people. Now, while the it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece comment spam was clearly and certainly unnecessary. I felt like what Jelly Bean did in response to tackle the spam, which was affecting other YouTubers, was pretty respectable. And keep in mind, Jelly Bean's only 17 years old, and I don't entirely think she had negative intentions with the spam she started, nor did she think about the detriment it may cause. I personally think she did this because the more comments you get on a YouTube short video, the better it does in the algorithm, and because she saw this as a cool record to attempt to beat. Now we get onto the main crux of this entire situation. This all started in late January to early February when the hate towards Jelly Beans suddenly started to increase with the first few people making their videos about her. I need you guys to change your usernames. Now, Jelly Bean wants people to put Jelly in front of their usernames. And unfortunately, people are actually doing it. I don't know what Jelly Bean is thinking about but this is just, this has to stop now. Now, due to the it's not a mistake, it's a masterpiece spam, in which opened a wider audience eyes to Jelly Bean's content, the more publicity she started to gain. And as we all know, the more publicity someone gets, the more negativity they shall receive. I told my Discord to send me their funniest memes, and if I laugh, I lose. <sighs> So what people did was they started to nitpick some parts of her live streams on Twitch and YouTube content to try and twist the narrative that Jellybean was some terrible human being. One instance was this clip from one of her shorts. Relatable. God starts with G, and so does gays. Satan starts with S, and so does straights. So who's really going to hell? Rainy Rodriguez, LGBTQ plus ally. I completely agree with this statement. As you can see, Jellybean features an obvious joke from her Discord server, stating how because God begins with a G, and so does gays, and Satan starts with S, and so does straights, that means straights will go to hell. It doesn't take Einstein to understand this was an obvious joke. However, some people decided to try and twist this into Jelly Bean being straight phobic or some other nonsensical garbage which she wasn't even trying to do. 
completely overlooking the fact that this was just an unfunny joke and nothing else. It was in reality just harmless. But due to the increasing hate mob Jellybean was facing, any small criticism or problems stemmed against Jellybean was completely over-exaggerated to the masses and magnified on TikTok, where misinformation spreads like wildfire. Another instance was the clip I showed earlier of Jellybean jokingly calling a Five Nights at Freddy's character a pedophile. Ooh, sorry, I just threw away. You pedophile! Block him, he's gone. And unironically, some people actually got upset and molded at this. I'm sorry, if you got angry at a fictional horror game character being called a pedophile, you seriously need to reconsider your time wasted on the internet and probably touch some grass. Or better yet, go touch some soil. But as I stated earlier, the backlash towards this small minor situation was amplified so heavily due to the hate mob bashing Jellybean currently that she decided to make an apology for it. Like what? Jellybean did not need to apologize for such a stupid joke. You're essentially just feeding the hate thrown towards you because now not only are you viewed as spineless, but also guilty to an extent, because now you've just addressed the situation, making it into a bigger deal, compared to if you had just ignored the situation in general, and it would have died down like two days later. But then again, one must consider she's literally only 17 years old. All the popularity she's gained in a small time frame and criticism and attacks she was facing must have been pretty hard and overwhelming to experience. Because no one can really understand how stressful being a content creator is, especially when you're in the headlights of drama, until you actually experience it for yourself, with the tens of thousands of people bashing you. But one of the most pathetic things which was going around at the time was the fake and fabricated Discord screenshots of Jellybean saying the N-word. Now this misinformation was spread heavily across TikTok and other social medias, and with everyone still on the Jellybean bad hate train, there was only a small amount of people actually questioning at the time the legitimacy behind the screenshot, with the rest blindly believing that it was real. So Jellybean had to vocally state on her Twitter that these screenshots were, surprise surprise, absolutely fake. In their Twitter thread they stated how these screenshots held no weight whatsoever and established how easy it was to impersonate someone on Discord. Jellybean also stated how pathetic it was for these people to do this just because they had a distaste towards her content and that she would be taking a temporary break from Twitter. However, this was only the start of the harassment Jellybean would receive, and the next parts of this situation get much, much worse. Now, in mid-February, the prominent commentary channel called The Beak made a video about Jellybean, which inevitably set the power keg off for the entire YouTube community to also make videos on her, causing the hate towards her content and channel to skyrocket, with many people on the internet clowning on her and her content, especially in her comment sections. She was truly becoming the commentary community's punching bag, and talking about her was definitely pulling in views, so therefore people continued to do it. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Keep in mind the hate was also spreading unnaturally fast on TikTok as well, where people were consistently mocking her content in any way they can. I've been keeping a really big secret from you guys. I am seven feet tall. At two million subscribers, I will be revealing my deepest, darkest secret. You might get made fun of. Absolutely no way I'll hit two million subscribers with other people sharing a common opinion that her content was overall just uninspiring, obnoxious, cringe, and unfunny. Using that as an excuse to continuously attack and insult her, with many YouTube videos on Jellybean getting hundreds of thousands of views, and with some TikTok videos on her getting millions of views as well, as well as hundreds of thousands of likes. With the term Jelly Mid and Jelly Bozo being very popular insults to throw at her. Now since the hate mob towards Jellybean was going all out, this was around the time where the degeneracy really started to take place, with people crossing the boundaries of what should be morally acceptable. People started to send threats to Jellybean and create Discord hate servers dedicated to her, even stealing her vanity link. This server is full of degenerate people, so I definitely wouldn't recommend you go on to it. And they also purged their chat a lot to prevent the server from actually being taken down. Also, these haters were responsible for distributing her personal information across the internet. Yes, you heard me right. This 17-year-old Minecraft YouTuber was doxxed 
purely because internet children did not like her content because it was cringe. What I find really ironic was, at first, internet vigilantes were acting like they were providing a service for battling the toxic jellybean stands who were sending death threats to people, but now the anti-jellybean community has unironically become just as bad, if not even worse than hers, for spreading a full-on dark spin of jellybean, including images of her and her family who literally did nothing wrong and are completely innocent in this situation. Like how do her family members have any relevance to this situation? And how is the excuse Jellybean's content is cringe, plausible for leaking all her personal information for thousands of people to see? It is even more sickening to see people on TikTok spreading her real life face when Jellybean has made it clear she doesn't wish to do a face reveal yet, only for people to poke fun at her appearance and harass her for her looks. It's pathetic how far people have gone to try and harass Jellybean, as if they're achieving anything beneficial whatsoever. They're literally just cyberbullying a 17 year old for their own sick satisfaction. Wow, real cool, congratulations. Like, so what if her content is cringe? I might dislike her content myself as I've made a few jokes here and there about it in this video, but I'm not going to engage in leaking her personal information around the internet because of it. And bragging that I have her address on Reddit. People need to understand that her humour is childish because that's the audience she caters to, literal children, and she is 17 herself. Like sure her content is obnoxious and loud, but that's the persona people have to adopt for children to be invested in their content. Like if you don't like their content, just don't watch it. Just put I'm not interested in her videos on YouTube and it won't be recommended to you ever again. I find it sickening the sheer amount of people making fun of Jellybean being doxxed. Because I know damn well, if they were in her position and experiencing all of this, they would absolutely hate it. It's just pretty interesting to see the anti-culture against Jellybean's quote-unquote toxic fanbase and bad content turned out to be the same, if not even worse. And many YouTubers like The Beak were even vocal about their distaste towards what was happening to Jellybean and condemned it by stating, Jellybean's face is apparently being leaked. Look, joking around about and calling someone's content cringe is perfectly fine, but doxing is never justified and never a joke. If you do that, you're a piece of garbage. But people honestly took it to another disgusting level by doing one of the most deplorable things I could even cover in this video. Internet weirdos started to make not safe for work content of her character when she is a literal minor and has been vocal several times to not do that type of art. With people making art of her and Red Velvety who is another PNG YouTuber who is about 18 years old, who is another subject of doxing which I will discuss later on in this video. The art created of her was simply revolting, sickening, deplorable and vile and the people clearly did this despite Jellybean once again for her quote unquote cringe content, with many other people begging for more not safe for work images of Jellybean, so they can do god knows what with it. It's absolutely disgusting how the internet treated Jellybean with this degenerate behaviour, just because people over exaggerated her content into something absolutely disgusting and terrible, and used it as an excuse to harass her. No one deserves what Jellybean went through, and that's coming from someone who doesn't even like her content, or appreciate her comment spam months back. It is a genuine wake up call to anyone who engaged in these deplorable acts against her to stop, because they are achieving absolutely nothing positive out of this ordeal. The fact that people woke up one day and thought that making not safe for work of a minor's character was a good idea is sickening and vile. And the fact this type of artwork of Jellybean is so popular on so many websites is so much worse. Eventually the hate got so bad, she took an almost two week break from YouTube before uploading again as of making this script. And she has privated her TikTok account with over 200,000 followers, with people celebrating that they bullied a 17 year old off the app like it's some epic achievement. While yet again posting an image of her face with people making fun of it yet again. But another major segment to bring up in this video is the poor treatment and harassment of other PNG YouTubers who have also faced a large amount of hate and criticism for their quote unquote cringe content and similarities to Jellybean. A prominent example being the furry called Red Velvety with almost 900,000 subscribers and he makes equally questionable content as well. Where the ladies at? Let me explain. So YouTube, yes, the website you're watching this on right now, has a wonderful analytics tab where you can learn everything about the people watching your content. 
which yes to me means you so i went digging and i found out there was a gender imbalance among my subscribers why are 12 percent more males subscribed to me than females why aren't more females subscribed it's looking like a sausage party out here oh hell no now, due to the internet's growing distaste towards all PNG Shorts YouTubers, and because Red Velvety has already collaborated with Jellybean before, people started making videos criticizing him, and others decided to target this person and dox all his personal information on Doxpin for yet again thousands of people to see, with their pathetic excuse being, oh, he was cringe, so it's perfectly fine to release all his in real life information and real life face and images of his house on the Doxpin. Like, how messed up do you have to be? And as stated earlier, they even put Red Velvety in messed up Rule 34 artwork with Jellybean, who is a minor. And yet another target of this internet harassment campaign would be another Minecraft PNG YouTuber furry called Frostfox, who is friends with Red Velvety and was also doxxed too. As of March, the situation slowly started to subside, with more mature mindsets being used and more people starting to realize that the hate against Jellybean was overall not exactly justified and that they didn't deserve almost any of the harassment they were inundated by. This situation was extremely messy and goes to show how toxic and unhealthy the internet can really be sometimes and how unneeded this drama was because Jellybean was just cringe. That was it. She wasn't a straight phobe or racist or any of that stuff. She was just a child bullied off certain social media platforms because of her content being hated by thousands. I just wanted to make this video going over the entire situation so people have an easier time digesting what was real and false about this situation, and so they can see both sides in an unbiased manner. And also, I just wanted to share my opinion about this entire situation too. So thank you all for watching, make sure to like and subscribe if you are new and found this video interesting to watch, and make sure to spread this video around the community so more people can be made aware of the truth. And also make sure not to harass anyone mentioned in this video. This video is just a documentary type video and not intended for harassment or hate speech or cyberbullying at all. It's just for educational and informative purposes only. Goodbye.